you could just come to class early, get your test out, start working on corrections, and then say, hey, can you take a look at this, Mr. Waller? And I'm like, okay, you missed up here, you gotta do this, right? Or that's great, you did good, keep going. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because some guys, some of you guys have turned in corrections to quizzes or tests and you've gotten zero points back, right? Which is the worst you could do. You're never gonna lose more points if you turn in corrections. So we'll make sure everybody understands that. There's no reason for that. I will help you. Other tutors will help you. If you're like, I'm tired of listening to this guy, I have to sit there and listen to him all the damn time. There are other people that are really good that you can go talk to. Okay, I like it. Anybody else not get their test back yet? Did I miss anybody? Oh. Um, And any other questions from anything? Yes. Someday. I am. I'm currently. I part. I separated out what I normally do after a test. Is the people that made below average grade on the test, I'll grade their homework priority, right? So just to let you know, if you do really well on the tests and quizzes, and you turn in your homework on the day of the review or the day of the test, you might get a big stack from me before the final that I haven't even looked at. You guys understand. My priority is the people that need help. And if you're doing really well on the test and such, you don't need as much help from me. So I'm not going to set you as a priority. Does that make sense? That sounded bad what I just said, but hopefully I'm not putting you as a priority. Okay, maybe. Is that, is that all right? But if you specifically have questions or want it, then you can always just say, hey, can you look at it or can I come by or can we look at it? Yeah, okay. Um, anything else, guys? Yeah, actually, like when you got a, uh, a manager, you know, and then you've got like a logarithm that's really like it was a, uh, an exponent to it. Yeah. So, for example, if I had 10 to the 7 log W, yeah, right? Okay. It's one of my favorite problems. This is a very straightforward way to do this. So, I read it just now, right? 10 to the 7 log W. So, what's in the exponent? What's in the exponent? 7 log w. The whole damn thing's in the exponent, correct? Now, how are these functions related? They're inverse. True. Is there something in the way of them killing each other? Because that's what they live to do. So sad. They live to kill each other. So how do I get that out of the way? So now can these do what they want to do? Yes, so then the answer would just be 37, right? Oh. Now, real quick, real quick. Does everybody get that? Do you see how that problem's done? There's no reason for Jeff to show you a different way. But I am. I'm going to show you. Again, that's done. What I'm about to do, you don't even really totally need to understand. What does this mean? By itself, what does that mean? No, careful. What's the base? 10. Okay. What does that represent? What's any log represent? Exponent. Specifically, what exponent? For example, just to remind you guys, what is the answer to this and why? 3. Why? Because 2 to the 3rd is 8, correct? So this represents the power that 10 needs really want you guys, this is the power that two needs to become eight. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. Or do you understand that? You don't have to agree, but you understand. Okay, you with me? Remind you guys, we did the problem, it's done. You don't have to ever do it the way I'm about to show you, but I wanna show you this. So, this is the power that two needs to become eight, correct? 
So when I raise 2 to it, it becomes 8, of course, because that, that is the power that 2 needs to become 8, correct? That is what that represents, correct? You with me? That represents the power that 2 needs to become 8, correct? So when I put it as a power on 2, of course it becomes 8, because that's what it does. So what is this? This is the power that 10 needs to become W to the 7. So when I raise 10 to it, it becomes freaking W to 7, because that's what the hell its job is. It's the power that 10 needs to become W to the 7. So I'll stop doing that. I'm sorry. You don't have to look at it the way I just said. A math geek like me just kind of goes crazy with that kind of thing. But look, here's the, here's the way we can do this. They done. <laughs> I don't need the other way I just said. I don't. But I just wanted to say that to you because I find it cool. So I couldn't stop. Okay. Um, Melanie and Elena. Let me know if there's any questions or anything that's wrong. Okay. Are there any other questions? Why did you put the seven over there? Where? Sorry. Uh, Here? Oh. I know what base to log of that base of something is because these kill each other. Okay. If there's something in the way, I need to get it out of the way. But did you make it an exponent when you moved it, or did you just leave it there? Yeah, I made it an exponent, yeah. Because that's the property of logarithms, correct? A power can come down, or something in front can go back up. Is that, is that all right? That's a property of logarithms. You guys with me? Okay, maybe. And again, there's so many ways to look at this. Uh, what is a four squared to the seven? I don't want to know a number, just what can you do with that? Four, four to the? To the two times seven. Good, okay, right? So isn't this 10 to the seven times log w? So isn't this 10 to the log w to the 7? Right? Isn't that w to the isn't that same answer? So there's multiple ways to look at that. Of course there is. Because there's multiple ways that relate to what a logarithm represents. You just pick the way you like best. There's so many ways. Most people don't pick the way I did over here. I understand. Okay. Okay. Anything else from the test? Come. On. Sorry, man. Hold on. There you go. Okay. And please, dear God, anybody who missed this last test or still is missing something else, if I haven't set up anything with you yet to take a makeup or something, email me. Right? Just stay on me. Uh, I need your help to maintain what you need because I have a lot of students, right? The paper and everything's driving me a little crazy, but I'll be okay. And you're all like, whatever, dude. Just, just help me help you, right? Little Jerry Maguire for you. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get back into 6-6. Six, six. Let's finish that thing off real quick. Um, I, I, can't, hmm, I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, if you guys did okay with the solving the equations, obviously there are a few troubles with it, but uh, why do I not have to use logarithms to help me solve this equation? For example. Yeah. Uh, they both have a common fraction. Common Sure, I'll, I'll say, yeah, common base. I'll say that. Yeah. So isn't this 2 to the 4x minus 1 equals 2 to the 4? So therefore, these two must be equal okay. to each other. That's dangerously close to one of your problems. I didn't mean to do it to it. So if you had a problem almost like this, you're, you're welcome. So you just set these equal and you're done. You, I mean, solve for x, done. So we only have to use logarithms to help us. Logarithms would work on that, by the way. All day long, and some of you guys did that, but there was no need. There was zero need for them, right? 
I need logarithms if I have something like this. What, like? Can any of you rewrite this with base 2? No. Easily. No. Could this be written as base 2? That's the whole point of the problem is yes, it can. Would it be a nice power on a 2 to make 11, 11? Hell no. Okay. So how do I do this? I basically just told you. Yeah, why do we take a log of both sides? True, but what is it that logs do for us? It's the only function we know of that does this for us. Where's the variable? In the power, correct? So when I have a variable stuck in a square root, what do we do? Why? Because it cancels. Squaring is the only function that could save, make the inside of a square root free, that can free it. Does that make sense? If I square, that kills the thing that's making my x stuck. My x is stuck in the power. We only have one thing that can help us. Now, dividing by 2 won't do shit for me. Do you guys understand that? That doesn't cancel this. No. Because how many 2s do I have here? 4x minus 1 of them. I love it. So if I divide by 1, then I've got 4x minus 2 of them now. They did nothing for me, right? Okay. So if I take... And of course, I'm going to take a natural log. Do I have to take a natural log? Can I take any other log? Yeah. Of course. Why do I take a natural log? Because it's one less. Yes, letter. okay. One less. Letter. Sorry, I'll stop doing that. And seriously, that's why. And now what happens? Now you can bring the four The whole reason we did that is that comes down. Now, some of you guys wrote it like this. Why is that not quite right? There's something wrong here. It doesn't have parentheses. Yeah, you got to multiply the whole thing. Now you did the next step, okay, some of you guys, but you know you got to be careful. All right, real, I'm sorry. So I went a little fast. Get that sucker down. My x is here, so I want to get rid of that weird thing. And now I've only got two more steps, and I'm done, right? What are those two steps? Add one. Multiply by one and four. Multiply by one and four. Okay. All right. So then I can bring it up here. Add one. And then divide by four. Or multiply by one fourth, however you want to look at it. That would be the exact answer, and then you chuck that sucker in the calculator, get it in get an approximate answer. You guys with me? So we all saw that kind of problem on the test. So what are the problems? We also saw logarithmic problems, right? So where you got that? I'm sorry. Yes? Could you take the natural log of 11, 11 divided by natural log of 2? Could you plug that into your calculator first and then add the 1? Two one things. Step? Two things. First off, you would never get to the exact answer. That's the exact answer, right? Mm -hmm. Secondly, if you bring decimals in too early in a problem, you're going to round, and then anything you do to that is going to propagate that error. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you guys understand propagate the error. So I, I don't do a lot of boating, but I'm sure you guys can be with me. If I'm one degree off where I want to be, seven hours later, I am way far away from where I want to be. So any error we introduce early in a problem, when I do more shit to it, it's going to propagate. It's going to get worse. I don't know if that makes any sense. But that's why you almost always want to bring decimals in, approximate, round at the end. If you've taken any science classes, they must have made a big deal about that. OK. I have a question. Yes. So towards the end of the problem, why did the four go in the well, what do I do to both sides here? I like the way you put it. You said multiply by 1 4 or divide by 4, right? So all I did was divided this by 4 and I divided this by 4. So, for example, if I had, if I was solving for y, trying to get a, um, uh, what do you call it, put this into form for a linear equation, right? When I just divide each piece by four, yeah. 
when I just put a four on the bottom of each piece, that's what dividing means. So I just put a four on the bottom of each piece. But then, but then that's what dividing means. Dividing the four by the natural log of two. What do you mean? No, 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 no. This is a single number, yes? Yeah. And I divided that number by four. Or, if you want to look at it, like I multiplied it by one fourth, right? Right? Okay. Um, four, oh, good job. So right here, 4x equals ln of la Right? Okay. Whenever you have fractions in a problem, it's a really smart idea, instead of dividing, to multiply by the reciprocal. Is that cool? That is divided by four, right? Yeah. So let me put that next to each piece. Because that doesn't have an L and two. Okay. They don't have L, they don't have LCD. You can't combine. Them. Okay. I like it. I like it. And then you would just chuck this in the old calculator. Yes. Okay. So from here, would you be able to move the four that way, or would you just plug everything into your calculator? Just plug everything in your calculator. Yeah. Why would you move the four? Move the four. How do you mean? Sorry. Like. Put it up in the power. Yeah. Same thing. Oh, okay. You'll get the same answer if you do this or if you do this. Those are the same answer. Okay. Where did the 16 come from? Two. Yeah. Okay. You guys with me? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. I love all this, by the way. This is awesome. Okay. Yes? You could do that, but that would be gross. Exactly. I mean, you guys are so used to doing this uh, when you solve. I really want this. To, you do this automatically when you solve this because you know you want mx plus b. You want separate things. I could do this, but then don't you want to separate them? Yeah. Okay. But you could. Okay. You could. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right. I could do this. Does that look nice? No. Does that look easy to plug in your calculator? So why would I do that to myself? But, so it you could. You totally could. And this is a valid answer for, and this is completely valid. And if you put in your calculator correctly, you could get the right answer for the approximation. That's totally fine. This is sort of not simplified, though. This is another fraction inside of a fraction, which generally isn't good. Yeah. OK. So one thing that you guys don't get really used to What's 7 third divided by 4? See, that should be quick. What's 7 third divided by 4? Seven twelfths. That simple. 7 divided by 3, divided also by 4. So what's the total amount being divided by now? 12. So 7 thirds divided by 4 is 7 thirds divided by 4 is 7 thirds times 1 fourth is 7 twelfths. That's bullshit. 7 divided by 3 divided also by 4 is 7 divided by 12, right? Okay, maybe. So cutting 7 pies in thirds and then cutting each of those in fourths. Well, now you got twelfths, right? What happened to you? What is that? <laughs> Good job, John. Maybe, maybe. So can you just like multiply the three and the four? Like when you yeah. Like yeah, totally. Okay, enough of that. It's a little side note. But that is one little thing that I, you just don't get enough practice with, but it shows up often enough that you we really should do more of that with you. Okay. Uh, okay. So getting into logarithmic stuff we've seen equations like so this is a nice easy one it's easy for you to say Jeff
This should be a really easy one. You saw one, I'm pretty sure you saw one like this on there. Did I give you one with two pieces? I think I did. How do I solve this? You take the log base three of the side? I'm already taking the log base three. Oh. It's sort of like if I said, how do you solve this? And you said, take the square root of both oh. sides. So you don't take the same function, you take the opposite function, correct? Or in this case, something a little more direct is just rewrite it. What is this, what's log base three of this equal this mean? Three to the? Three to the three. three. Equals? Five x plus seven. You can immediately rewrite it in exponential form. Do you see how that's awesome? By the way, so is everybody cool with that? Everybody see how we got from there to there? No problem. You guys with me? But I do want to show you one thing, as Jeff often does. Uh, yeah. If I raise three to both sides, what happens here? So don't I get five x plus seven equals three cubed? Same way you got here. Okay. That's another way to look at what we're actually doing. So rewriting from logarithmic to exponential is actually a shortcut of raising both sides, three to both sides. And then now it's easy, yes? In fact, they made a problem that's got a nice answer. That's crazy. I didn't mean to. Subtract seven, divide by five, four. Okay. What can the answer not allow to happen here? Four is okay because it doesn't make this become what? Negative or zero, kick ass, right? Logs can only handle things that are above zero, and you know that from the graph of it. Asymptote here, right? Can only handle above zero inputs. So if this would have come out to be negative four, that would have been a problem. <clears throat> How come it can't handle zero? Well, if I try to throw a zero in there, the answer has to be the power that does what? What would the answer to this mean? The power that I put on three, or I, the power I raise three to to make it become zero. zero. Can anyone tell me what I raise through three to to make it become zero? Hmm? Three to the first is? Three. Okay, try again. Three to the zero is one. Three to zero is one. There's nothing you can raise it to. Three to the negative billion is one over three to the billion, yes? Mm -hmm. See how there's always gonna be a one on top. I don't care how big negative you make this. It can never be zero, and that's why there is a asymptote there, yes? Again, that is why the asymptote exists. It can get really stupid. One over three billion. Most of us would just call that zero, yes? <laughs> if you had a one out of three billion chance to do something, you're like, well, that's not gonna happen. Are you with me? Most humans would call that zero. Math says, nah, it's not zero. It just isn't. It's really small. It's really close to zero, but can you get closer to zero? You can always get closer to zero. In fact, you just take one third of that, and now I'm one step closer. Take one third of that, and now one, take one third. I could do that forever. Do you guys with me? I could cut something in thirds forever. Not physically. I can't, physically, we're limited. I can't be that precise. Like a thing made out of a string of atoms. You know, I can't, I can't. But mathematically, we can cut shit in thirds forever. Are you guys semi with me? There's a, uh, real quick. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, well, you go first. Thank you. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing in math called Zeno's Paradox. Has anyone ever heard of Zeno's Paradox? And you're all like, sounds like an interesting band name, but no. <laughs> Zeno's Paradox is, Zeno wants to go from town A to town B. But to make it to town B, he's got to first go halfway, and then he's got to go halfway, and then he's got to go halfway, and then he's got to go halfway. He never makes it to town B. Now, me being the smart as I am, the first time my instructor told us about this, I just said, well, tell Zeno that the town is half as far away as it is than it really is. <laughs> right? If he thinks it's over here, then he's going to go there, and he's freaking there. Anyway, sorry, sorry, that's a side note. So Zeno's paradox is better if you say he can't even get started. 
Because in order to take a step, he's got to go, in order to go halfway, he's got to go half of that, and he's got to go half of that, and he's got to go half of that. He can never even get started. That's Zeno's paradox. Okay, sorry. Don't think about that too much, but okay. Poor Zeno, still trying to get to town meeting. All right, I'm sorry. Don't think about that too much. Better. Trying to put his second foot there. Yes, exactly. I say just have somebody carry him that's not so concerned about math. Okay. All right. So we saw, we've already seen problems like this. So basically, just going over problems we've seen. So how would I do something like this? Um, oh, shit, now i got to make it work. That would be really good if I could make it work. Hold on. Um, Okay, that'll work, that should work. How is this different from the last problem that we just did? I've got two logs now, right? I know what to do if there's a single, if it was that problem, that would be easy as shit, yes? Three to the third is x plus six, I'm great. So now I've got two logs, so my first thing is, can I just make that into one log? Of course you can, how do I do that? Multiply. <clears throat> now I've got a single log equals three. That's easy. Now I can rewrite that, right? What would I get when I rewrite that? Three. To the third. Equals x squared plus six x. Okay. Now here's a trick you guys need to understand. That is the problem I've got now, correct? It does not matter where it came from. But I think some of you guys hold in your mind, there was a log before, oh shit, do I do? No, no, it does not matter where the hell that came from. That is the problem. What tells me what to do next? How do I solve that? No matter where it came from, how do I solve that? Why can't I just get X by itself? And be done with the damn thing. It's so a square. So what do we do in that case? Get it equal to? Zero. And then factor. So I'm going to subtract. That's 27, correct? And then I factor. What do you guys get? Three and nine. Three and nine. Who's what now? Or minus three. Yep. Plus nine, so the middle term is positive. So I get three, and I get negative nine. Are both of those answers valid? Both. Why? Negative. Well, be careful. Be really, really careful. I could get negative ants, negative x's. What cannot happen is the inside can't be negative, right? So my problem would have been x plus 10 and x plus 11. Negative 9 would not have been a problem. Do you guys see that? If this would have been x plus 10 and x plus 11 and x is negative 9, neither inside would have been negative. Do you guys see that? Negative 9 plus 10, negative 9 plus 11. So be really careful. The answer can be negative, totally. No answer can make the inside of this negative. And in this case, negative 9 makes both of them negative. Does that make, you guys see that? So I can't have that as an answer. That's the only answer. And real quick, why does that happen? Didn't we multiply these two together? If they are both negative, what do we get when we multiply them together? Positive. So this problem here has two answers. They, these two answers work here. They do not work here because separately, those come out to be negative in one of the cases. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. I'm sorry, who had a question? So I understand why it can't like, be zero or negative, but um, you said there was like an isotope like at zero. Um, so for an exponential, there's an asymptote of zero. Yes. Yeah, so does that and, and for a logarithmic, there's an there's an asymptote at zero that way. Yeah. Okay. Good. Does it have to do with like um, the denominator being zero or? No. no, it's it's got to do with what we just said earlier. That I don't care how. Uh, so. Oh. Okay. If I had log base something, how do I say this? Uh, uh, I can't. So if I, whatever number I put in there, a to the b equals it. So what 
can't an exponential have, what can the output of an exponential not be? Zero or negative. So what can the input of a log not be? Zero or negative. Because they're inverses of each other. Does everybody agree with me that the outputs of an exponential are the inputs of a log? Because that's how inverses work, correct? The output of one is the input of the other. X and Y switches, correct? So if I cannot output zero or negative from an exponential, I cannot input zero or negative into a log. Because that would require me to be able to get that kind of answer if I raise something to a power, and I can't. Okay. Okay, maybe. And again, on a more basic level, it's just because when I flip it, it that's where the asymptote goes, right? Yes? So on the equation to the right, if you were to end with a negative answer, is the positive answer always? What no, no. Uh, so if my equation had, had let's say, x minus 4 and uh, x minus 7, and I get x equals 3, that is a positive number, correct? Is it a valid answer? No. Because both of these would have a negative input. Can't do that. Do you see what I mean? So it's all about what the input ends up being. I can't just say that's negative, throw it out. I have to actually say, does it make the inside of any log negative? That's what I need to check. Does that make sense? If my problem would have been this, and I got negative nine, do I have to throw that one out? No. Because six minus negative nine is 15, five minus negative nine is 14, it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Do you guys see that? Okay, I like it. Yes? So back to, sorry, back to what we were saying. What if it's like an odd power uh, with the exponent? Doesn't it also take negative? So the out, how do I say this? The input of an, of an exponential can be negative all day. Yes. And, and the output of a logarithm can be negative all day. Of course. Okay. Can the input, let me say this, can the output of an exponential be negative? Can the output of an exponential be negative? What if it's like to the power of three, isn't it? So if I have an exponential function, how do I get a negative answer out? Um, you can't. I can't. Unless this is negative, in which case it would have flipped, and then I can't get a positive answer out. So there's going to be an asymptote somewhere. OK, OK. Moving on. If I have, so let's look at uh, equations. The only kind of equations we haven't looked at yet are these. There was a problem like this on the, um, what do you call it? Practice test. I don't think it was exactly this, but this is very different than the two basic things we talked about. Can I, do you think taking a log right now would do anything for me? No. Do I have any property for natural log of A minus B? Be really, really careful. Is there a property for that? Yeah. No. No. I can talk about the natural log of the product or the natural log of the quotient. This becomes the addition. Oh. This becomes, yeah, yeah. Be really careful. It doesn't go both ways. Or in that case, right? I mean, it doesn't, you can't flip them. So what does this look like? It's just screaming at you to do what to it? Look at all the stuff that's all the same kind of shit. What do I do with that? Factor, yeah. So what comes out? Two. two. X. And B to the two. Good. What's left? Two. two. Negative two. Uh, X. Not one. one. Or nothing. Good. Minus. Oh. One. All right. Now watch this. You ready? Look at all the parts. Can two ever equal zero? Can two ever equal zero? Can two ever equal zero? No. No. Okay, good. That didn't give me any answers. Can x square can x equal zero? Yes. Yes. If x is zero, x is zero. 
topology. Can e to the 2x ever equal 0? Maybe, depending on what x is. No. Show me an exponential. Draw it in the air for me. Do it! No, sorry. <laughs> Do it like that. I just wanted to see what you guys Do it now. Uh, yeah. What, what is this? What are we doing back here? What is this shit back here? Asymptote. Asymptote at? Zero. Zero. And so it never gets to zero, correct? I don't care how big of a negative number you raise e to, it's never going to be zero because it's going to have a one on the top, right? I really want e to the negative freaking big number. You with me? e to the negative freaking big number. Isn't that one over e to the freaking big number? Is e to the zero. What's e to the zero? One. Oh. This is greater than zero. zero. Do you guys agree with me? <laughs> the only way of fractioning. This way. You're good. Don't worry about it. It's it, trust me. It's really easy to get some of this stuff turned around. I understand. I can never raise something to a power and make it zero. I cannot do that. I can make it really small because raising something to a power. It's just multiplying it by itself over and over. A negative is dividing itself over and over. I can't divide something over and over and get to zero. I can never do that, ever. You start with a number and you divide by a number forever, it's only gonna get smaller, it's never gonna get to zero. Do you guys? Yes. Now, on a human level, eventually it's freaking like basically zero, but basically zero, not zero. Okay, okay, I like it, okay. So does this, can, same way that can two equal zero? No answers. Can x equal 0? Yes. Can e to the 2x equal 0? No answer. Can 2x minus 1 equal 0? Yes. Yes. So 0 and 1 half are the answers. You with me? You guys already automatically ignore constants because they can't become 0. Well, now any exponential piece can't become 0. It's not going to add answers. Just the same way that two. Did two add an answer? Nope. Never. Okay, maybe. Okay. So you will get some problems that are uh, you have to factor stuff. And now the final type. The final type. It's the final type. So what about? I'm just gonna write this down. Let's see what you guys think. Uh, Sure, Jeff. Make it up as you go. There you go, buddy. Doing good. What do you want to put over here? There it is. Okay. What the shit? Do you guys notice? What is, so this is a coefficient, this is e to the x term. Would you guys agree with me? How does that relate to this? It's squared, correct? Mm -hmm. So isn't this a lot like if the middle term is x, the first one's that squared? Yes? How would I how would I do this? Factor. Yes? See if Jeff made a problem that works. Minus eight plus two. Right? You guys with me? You guys with me? You guys really with me? Remember how I said if this was a fourth power and this is a squared, it works the same way because when you break that in half, it becomes the middle. As long as the middle is half the first one, it'll work. Oh shit. Tension breaker, how do you feel? So how do I cut this in half? You literally cut the exponent in half, right? Because I put e to the x, e to the x. What's e to the x times e to the x? E to the 2x. I love it. Isn't that the middle term now? And we already figured out the numbers at work. So either e to the x equals 8. You guys see that? Either e to the x minus 8 is 0. So e to the x equals 8. Or e to the x equals negative 2. Does, can this happen? Nope. No answer. Can this happen? How do you get the answer? Take the natural log. X equals natural log of 8. And if I ask for an exact answer, there it is. Fast forward approximation, you throw that shit in the calculator. Write that number down. Go about your day.
So again, it, it's this idea of when can I factor something? When is it quadratic in form? It extends to other functions. If the middle function is half of the first function, I can then possibly factor it. I could break it up in half. It could work. It's quadratic in form. Okay, maybe. You all look very excited about that. Okay. Which is understandable. Yes? Oh, I just made it x to the fourth as an example. Oh. Yeah, I just this is just an example problem. I thought you got it from. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. This is an example to illustrate what we can do here. My fault. Yeah. So I could make this six as long as this is three. Three, and then these would be three. And you guys see why that works? Because these together make this, and then when I add these two middle terms, of course I'm going to get some number of thirds. So that's why this has got to be half of this for it to maybe work. Yes. So would you get x, x to the third and then you still have to factor it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If this is equal to zero, which it wasn't, but now it is, then you have to keep going. Yes. Cool. Okay. Maybe. So these these two are not anything except this is an illustration of what we do here, right? There's no other connection between these. Okay, okay. I like it. So those are the extra little bits that you'll see in section 6.6 six when you go to do that homework, right? Because again, it's still do the next test. I will put, I'll probably end up putting at most two problems on the next test from here. Yes. So just a clarifying question, it only works when the exponents are half of each other. Well, when the middle is half of the first two. Yeah. Or, you know, they could be written out of order. So all you need is one term to be half the power of another. Yes. And, and again, can I factor this possibly? Is this possibly factorable? Of course, right? Is this possibly factorable easily? Let's, let's say that one, because could I factor that easily? No. It might be factorable using? Quadratic or completely Synthetic. I like it. Those horrible charades I just did, sorry. Do you guys see the difference? Now it's not half of that. It's not quadratic in form, but now it is, yeah, yeah. So, and, all right, all right, I'll stop. So here's what's funny, watch this. Okay, I'm gonna blow your mind a little bit. What about, uh, what about that? This is another reason why I wish we didn't have root notation. How do I rewrite the middle term with power notation? Oh, x plus x squared, one half. So is the middle power half the first? Yeah. yeah. Literally it is. Ooh. So could I factor this? Hell yeah, here we go, we're gonna do it. X Break one up in one half. half, okay, one half, one half. And that's why the middle term would become what it is, yes? What two numbers work? See, now I don't give a shit what these weird things are. Now it's just numbers. What two numbers make these Plus work? Four, four, Plus four, three. minus three, 11. So here I would get complex answer. No, I wouldn't. X to the one half plus four, I would get no answer. Can a square root equal a negative? No. Nope. Here, square both sides, there. Okay, enough of that, enough of that, sorry. So in order to possibly factor, you just need a three-term dude to have one of the powers be one half of another. Because then when you cut that in half, it matches up. If it's not that, you might have to use synthetic. Okay. So if it's odd, like uh, if it's like to the third, it has to be like um... Yeah, if one is to the third, this one has to be a six. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Or 1.5 if you want to get really freaky. And in the fractional power is okay. It just means a root. So we're just like what we did here. Okay. 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 So all in a side. Okay. So, um, I am I am kind of excited to. Has anyone here seen any trigonometry before? Raise your hand. Has anyone never worked with trigonometry? You might have heard sine, cosine before, but you don't even know what that's about, anybody. It's okay if not. 
Uh, you seem to be reticent to hold your hands up, but I know there's a few. Okay. Um, so I feel a burden to make sure that this makes sense to you because trigonometry is such an underpinning of so much stuff. And at the heart of it, it is really too simple to believe. So I'm going to try to build it up. Later, when we're doing really crazy shit with it, and we will do some crazy shit with it, we just will, I'm going to remind you guys, remember, all these mean is this, is a very simple underpinning of an idea. Yeah? Before you get into that, when the argument of a logarithm is fraction? Sure. Like that? Yeah. Okay. All right, what's log base 4 of 16? Uh, two. 2. So that's the power 4 needs to become 16. Yeah. What kind of power must the, the 4 have been 2 in order to make it 1 16? Negative. Negative. So then it would be negative 2. So the way I look at it is this. I have to do two things to 4. I have to make 4 become 16, and then I have to flip it. So what makes 4 become 16? 2. And then what makes it flip? Next. That is the best way to look at that shit. In fact, that's how I look at if I give you a problem like this. And we talked about this before, but it's a while back. I said, look at this as two things to do. Flip it and then square it, correct? Flip it, pop it, no, flip it and then, sorry, square it. So you can look at that the same way. You can look at that exactly the same way. That would be two, that would be negative two to make it flip. What if okay. the numerator isn't one? Okay, uh, let's see, what's a good problem, let me think. Bup, 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 bup. Well, hmm. yeah, okay, wait, 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 let me think about it. What would work out? Well, let's see. So if I raise four, there's no good way to make that. Let me think. Is there a problem where the top is not one that actually is doable? The base would have to be a fraction. Let me think about that. Yeah, I can't think off the top of my head of a problem that would actually work out nicely. Because think about this, in order for this to work, in order for this to be a nice number, in order for that to be a nice number, what can I do with the log of a quotient? Yeah. In order for this to be a nice number, both of these have to be kind of nice numbers, right? Which means the top has to be something that goes along with 4. And if, if the top was some multiple 4, this would reduce to be 1 over something. Right? So I'll have to think about that, I'll have to think about that, to see if there is something that I'm not thinking about off the top of my head. Anyway, okay. But in general, if it wasn't, um, yeah, if it wasn't, like if it was 3 sixteenths, the most you could do would be this. Uh, what? You guys with me? That's the most you could do. You can't do something direct because there's no way to get. What's four to the what power? Sixteen. Oh, that's on four. I thought it was five. Oh my. Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. I have another question. Yeah, sure. So when you've got, uh, okay, you're trying to combine into one logarithm. Sure. You, you've got like. You got three logs separated by minuses. Sure. I can see like when you got one and a one, then you can put like like m goes over n. Right? You want to see something? I'll show you how I would do this problem. Okay. And then we'll do it slower, right? Here's how I would do this problem. I'd say okay, log w. A cubed is positive. It's on top. Isn't this isn't this positive? Mm -hmm. 
These two are both negative. They're going to end up on the bottom. That's going to go up and make B to the fourth third. That's going to go up and make C squared. Done. The two negative logs end up on the bottom because what does it mean when I subtract logs? Division. And they're both being subtracted, so they're both going to end up being divided. Do you see that? Now, if you want to do it step by step, this is where what got people into trouble. So you got this. Just bring the powers up top right. Now, people did this. And this is not technically wrong. Well, it's not wrong, but it is technically wrong. That's the way to say that term. If I do this next step, everybody with me so far? Mm -hmm. Log minus log is log of the quotient. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. So now if I take this and make it um, a cubed over b to the 4 thirds over c squared, that's not done. Because mm -hmm. that's fraction inside of fraction. It's fractception. Leave Leonardo to spin his little thing and whatever. Then the a cubed has to become the numerator and you have to multiply the, uh, the, the square. Oh, now it is, this is why I had the whole discussion earlier today is because now I can just rewrite this as uh, what's being divided? The b to the four thirds and the c squared. Done. This divided by this is this times one over this, which is this. Yes. No. Uh, so, that, so that only matters if um, negatives? Okay. Uh, real quick. X to the negative 1 is? 1, one over X. Okay. Negative power flips, correct? Uh, X to the negative 4 thirds. What's being raised to a negative power? Two. What is being raised? To a negative power. Uh, x. x. So only x is going to flip. So this would be 1 over x to the 4 thirds. If I wanted to flip the 4 thirds, I would have to raise it to its own negative first power. This is the only thing that can make something flip is to raise it to a negative power. It is a negative number. Never in our lives have negative 4 thirds equal 3 fourths. Right? That's not true, and I've never said that. And that's why I ask students. If you think what I'm saying at the moment goes against something we did earlier, come see me because that's impossible. We can't suddenly go, remember that shit we learned before? Yeah, that's totally wrong. Let's start doing the right. No, never, ever. I can only build, right? Does that make sense? Okay. 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 All right. So, first thing I want to ask. Um, we're going to do a couple of conceptual things today. When I have a circle, which I like that's a circle, for me that's pretty good. We normally break it up into a certain number of parts. Uh, so what do I mean by that? Like if I drew this, does anyone have an immediate reaction to what this is? 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So we break it up into degrees, correct? How many total degrees in a circle? 360. 360. What is special about the number 360? Is, is there actually physically, I'm going to blow your minds, everybody here understands that. If you never had a trick, I don't care. You all know there's 360 degrees in a circle, correct? Um, is a degree something physical that we can actually look at and measure? No, it's just we just decided. If I have a pie, could I cut it up into 360 parts if I'm really careful? <laughs> if I have a laser? your laser, you know, I can cut it into three and six parts, correct? Do I have to for some reason? No. Okay, we could have picked any number to break a circle up into. We totally could have just picked any damn number we wanted to. I really want that just to make sense. We just chose three. Why do you think we chose 360? Again, everything I've talked about has been about breaking it's stuff up. It's divisible by a lot of things. It's divisible by a shit ton of things. Right? In fact, 360, isn't that based on 60 in a way? What else is based on 60 in our everyday lives? Time. Time. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. 
thankfully not 60 hours in a day. I don't know. Okay. You guys all with me? Okay, stay with me, stay with me, because I'm about to say something weird that's totally off the, you're not going to have to remember this. The Babylonians. What, what, uh, what is our number system based on? Ten. And I have no idea why. The Babylonians, you don't have to remember this, they had a number system based on 60. So if you saw the number that was equivalent to one zero, that would mean 60. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. So our, our idea of time, how to break it up, our idea of how to break up um, direction on the earth. Don't we use latitude, longitude? Don't we use uh, uh, degrees and minutes? I don't know if you guys know that. The idea of how we stole it from the Babylonians. We're like, and the reason they use 60 is because what was most important to ancient civilizations, which is still pretty important today? Uh, agriculture. agriculture. And how many years are there approximately in a year? Huh? How many years? How many days? Oh, what did I just say? I said how many years are it? What did I say? How many years are in a day? How many years are in a year? Yeah. That's an easy question. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. I'm trying to make it. How many days in a year? Yeah, Roughly. Five. 360. So uh, there's actually 365 or, or 366, depending on if it's a leap year. So there's a roughly 360. Are you with me? So that was important. The Mayans. Anybody ever been to Chipotle? You don't have to admit to this. <laughs> if you go to Chipotle, and thankfully I don't go to Chipotle much anymore, on the wall, and nothing against Chipotle. They're yummy, but they're also not that great for you. On the wall, you'll see these weird uh, faces sometimes. Those are actually the, the like uh, ornamental representations of numerals in the Mayan system. Uh, and the Mayans forced the number 360 to show up in their number system because, again, agricultural civilization. 360 was important to them. All right. I think that's enough, Jeff. We could have picked 400. 400 could be broken up in a lot of ways, correct? 400 has a lot of factors too, right? Not as many as 360, but it has a lot of factors. So I really need you to understand, this is completely arbitrary. We just chose it. Do you guys all understand this? Okay. What would be a better way to measure distance around a circle would be something that actually means something physical. 360 degrees is bullshit. It's bullshit. It could have been 400. It could have been eight. It could have been one. One degree in a circle. Right? You guys with me? Okay. So watch this. This is such a cool idea. Let me see if I can. Did I do it? No. Uh, all right. Do you only want to do that, Jeff? True. So let me do this. What if I let me see if I got something? Rubber band. Okay. Come here, you. What if I took the radius? You with me? Yeah. And I curved it on the circle. I can't do this by myself. I curved it on the circle. So watch this. I take this radius, I pick it up, I bend it, and I put it back on the circle. If I walk this far, didn't I just go one radius worth of distance? Are you guys with me? You guys with me? Okay. Isn't that a physical uh, measurement? Is the number of radii around the circle? Are you with me? So if I went half of a radius, that's a way to measure how far I've gone, correct? Much better than this arbitrary made up bullshit. It's a physical measurement. Now watch, this is really cool. I really hope it's not just me that thinks this. I don't care how big or small my circle is. If I take the radius of the circle and I bend it and I put it on there, it's gonna end up at the same location. Do you see that? If my circle gets smaller, does my radius get smaller? So when I bend it and I put it down the circle, it actually goes the exact same angle. Let me stop for a minute. Let me stop. You guys sort of with me? You doing all right? <laughs> I wasn't sure how to interpret that. All right. So if I physically take the radius and put it here, right? And then I bend it and I put it back on the circle. That is another way to measure how far I've gone around. So if I go two radii around the circle, I would end up over here. Yes? I would go one radius, two radii. So it's sort of like 
uh, any unit of measurement is completely made up inches, completely made up shit. But it's just a, we said, here's an inch. So then how far is the number of inches? So I just say, doesn't every circle have a radius? It's there. Every circle has a radius. So now I can just measure my way around the circle using that radius the circle gave me. You guys with me? It's not made up shit. Now, does anyone remember the circumference of a circle? Two pi r. Yes. Why? Well, because two radius times twenty-two sevenths is the circumference of a circle. Here's the reason, and this freaked out civilizations throughout history. Uh, and I was trying to come up with a way to do this nicely, and I just, and I was trying to do it this morning really quickly. I wish I would have thought about it over the weekend, but too bad for me I did. Um, you could actually take a piece of string, measure how long it is. So I take a piece of string, and I measure how long it is. And then I make a circle out of it, and I measure the diameter. I don't care how long your piece of string is. When you make a circle out of it, if you take the diameter, sorry. You take the circumference divided by the diameter, you always get the same number. So there are civilizations, Egyptians come to mind, Greeks come to mind, there's a lot of civilizations that realize this shit. And if you're an ancient civilization and you're doing this and you're like, you keep getting the same number no matter how big or small your circle is, aren't you gonna freak out a little bit? Aren't you gonna go, well, this shit came from God, right? <laughs> Ra or whatever kind of God, whatever God. This God obviously wants us to realize this is important, so we're going to give it a symbol. And of course, the symbol we use is pi. Not every other civilization used that symbol, but they had their own symbol. The Egyptians rounded it. The Egyptians, now again, back in the day, how easy was it to measure shit? Not easy. So they actually got pretty good. 22 divided by 7. What's 22 divided by 7? That was their approximation for pi. What is 22 divided by 7? Three point one four, two eight, right? And you guys know, you guys know pi. Well, most of you should know it out to three to two places. Three point one four. Does anybody know the rest or more than the rest? Does anybody know the rest? <laughs> Why is that a funny question? Because pi <laughs> never forever. ends. There's no party like a pi party. It's a pi party never ends. So three point one four. As far as I know, it's three point one four one five nine six. If I remember correctly, is that right? Nine two six. Thank you. Okay. So I only know three point one four one five. That's all I know. So guess what happened? March fourteenth, two thousand fifteen. For math geeks like me, March fourteenth, three fourteen fifteen. Three point one four one five. That was Super Pi Day, and I was at a conference and we had little pies and everybody had a little pie thing and everybody pie. And you're like, oh my god. You walk in, you're like, oh Jesus. This is your cosplay shit. Okay, whatever. Everybody's pie stuff. Okay, sorry. I'll stop. Um, anyway, this is where our formula for circumference came from. And if I solve this for C, I get pi D. And of course, the diameter is how related to the radius? Wait, what? The diameter is how related to the radius? Oh, it's two yeah, it's two times. So if I just put R in there, I get 2 pi R. All right, let me stop for a minute. So this is kind of awesome. This, this says 2 pi radii, correct? However big the radius is, I have 2 pi of them. So no matter what circle you've got, I don't care how small or how big, if I go all the way around the circle, if I go all the way around the circle, I have just gone 2 pi radii. Whatever the radius is, I've gone two pi of them to get around the circle. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So this is a much better, I want you to realize what we just did. I'm going to use the number of radii instead of degrees. So instead of saying there's 360 degrees, now that circle kind of had a rough time. 360 degrees in a circle, we're instead going to say, there are two pi, and just to give it a little better name than radii, we call them radians. Do you see where the name come from? Because again, radian is just the length of a radius. Yes? How come we base it off of radius and not diameter? Why can't we just say We could. 
that's a beautiful thing. Uh, there's a whole separate, see how this is 2 pi? Some people were saying we should, there's something called tau, who is equal to 2 pi. So they're saying we should have used tau instead of pi, and then circumference would be pi tau instead of 2 pi r. You could have completely set up all of mathematics using that instead. We, we just didn't. We just didn't. There's some other reasons. There's some other functions that's better to have it based on the radius, but uh, does it make sense? We totally could have. Totally could have, but it's all set already. So for us nowadays, we're like, oh, we could have done that shit, but it's okay. Um, probably not, but does tau equal the same amount if you just use 2 pi r? How, what do you mean? No, no. Oh, there's no more stuff. 2 now. pi is 6.28 blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And that is equal to tau. That's all it means. Whatever 2 pi is, that's what tau is. Yeah. So we could use this variable instead of pi. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? If you don't, it's okay, because we don't use tau. So who cares? Okay. More Greek. Yes? So instead of saying the circle is 360 degrees, you could say the circle is 2 pi r. 2 pi radians. 2 pi radians. So I want you to really understand, if I go 1 this is kind of bugging me, but that's all right. If I go one radian, I made it roughly that far. I just take the radius and bend it. You guys with me? If I go one radius, that is, this angle is one radian. Yes? Uh, is this like 7.1 into or just one? Mostly 7.1. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm really bad. I don't know if you guys have noticed. I know we're in chapter 7. I don't know the boundaries necessarily because they're just ideas to me. So sometimes I have to go back and remember which section exactly what I'm talking about is in, but I'm pretty sure I'm just in 7-1. Is that all right? Yeah, I just want to try to learn this. No, I understand. And I feel bad for you if, I, if you ever are like, where the hell are we, Jeff? I will find out if I don't know. I know the ideas. I don't necessarily know exactly where they are in the book. Okay. Um, is everybody good so far? So watch this. Uh, all right, I really want to make sure you guys are really cool with this. Um, so using degrees, uh, what would this be? 90. So this angle, let's call it angle A, is 90 degrees. Now if the whole thing around is 2 pi radians, correct? Real quick, what would this, how far would this be? Five pi. Does it make sense? All the way around is 2 pi, so halfway is pi. Oh. You with me? Mm -hmm. You with me? So then what's this? Yeah, this is pi over two. Rad. So this is pi rad. So 90 degrees is pi over two radians. You guys are very excited. What is pi? equal. Pi rad is how many degrees? What's this? 180. 180. Okay. So again, we get a weird number that comes out of this. We gave it a symbol because it actually, it's silly the number of times pi comes up. So we gave it its own symbol. Of course we did. So we don't have to eternally write 3.14151 whatever that Okay, now watch. How much time? I got so little time. Um, you all agree that 12 inches in a, is a foot? Right? So if I have 78 inches, how do I change that to feet? So there's a really cool way to do this. Some of you guys have had chemistry before. We'll see what I'm doing. You ready? Watch this. If I want to go from inches to feet, what unit do I want to get rid of? I don't want this anymore. I don't want, don't want inches anymore, right? So what yeah. you put inches here? Oh, yep, yeah. yep. I want feet instead, correct? Yep. Yeah. And one foot, 12 inches, this tells me to divide. Yep. Yes? You guys with me? Yep. So those of you who have done uh, moles and Avogadro's number or whatever, it's the same idea. So watch this. If I have uh, pi over six radians, and I want to change that to degrees, 
right? Go with me, go with me. I can do exactly this. Pi over six radians. What unit do I not want anymore? Radians. And I want degrees. Well, what did we just say a minute ago? Pi radians is? Is 180. 180. See how the pi is canceled? Mm -hmm. And what's 1 sixth of 180? 30. 30 degrees. So if I go pi over 6 radians, I end up going 30 degrees. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it should make sense that if we already have an established unit of measurement and we come up with another one, there's got to be a way to convert between them. Just like U.S. versus the rest of the frickin' world, we still use units of measurement that were based on how long the King of England's foot was. Do you understand this? Our foot is how long one of the King of England's foot, I think it was one of the King Henry's, how long his frickin' foot was. And we still use that shit. Do you understand and everybody's like, I don't want to go to metric. I want to be American. We got feet. Oh, freaking came from the King of England. Are you kidding me? Sorry, sorry. I'll stop. Stop. Uh, there's no time for this anyway. Uh, do you guys know there was a Mars, I always forget which one it was, Polar Observer or something? One of the spacecraft we sent to Mars, you guys know the story, I'm sure. At some point, somebody must have told the story. What happened? Do you remember? So when they were programming the trajectory for the, for the uh, observer, the satellite, one group used metric, one group used our system. Yeah. And so, of course, it smashed into Mars. They were all like, we're almost there. And he, oh, what the hell just happened? We're not, what? We, we hit it? What? <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit, whoops. So in science, that's why we always use metric, because the rest of the world freaking uses metric. But I don't know what the hell. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, guys, that's enough for today. So I didn't get quite as far as I want to. So next time, we're going to actually introduce some trig functions and talk about what they represent. And I'm so excited. Sure. I hate Sokotoa. I will discuss it this much, and then I'll tell you the better way. Sorry if you love it. I'm sorry. Yes.